Hello, hello. How you doing today, Mitchell? Pretty good. How's everybody doing? Welcome back to another episode of Getting That Medical Degree. Uh, what are we talking about today? Uh, we're talking about the Naplex and how learning about some IV medications. Oh. Fun topic, you know? Yeah, sounds very interesting. For you guys, just to tune into the channel. The Naplex is the uh, pharmacy exam you take to get when you to get your license. On top of that, you can take the law exam as well. But this is like a huge part of your licensing thing. So we're doing this as a review for myself for take, studying for my boards, but also to help you guys learn as well. So yeah, let's get into it. So first things up is central lines and pretty much when you use them. Um, they're used for like highly concentrated drugs. If, if it's something too contrary, you don't want to put in a peripheral line. A long-term antibiotic. That's what ABX means. You'll see this abbreviation a lot. Or if the drug was has a pH or uh, osmolarity that's not close to the blood. For some reason, a central line works better for it. I'm honestly not 100% sure what the reasoning is for that, but that's just something I was taught, so... Do you know? Do I do I know what why central lines are used for? Yeah, like why you would use it for drugs with pH or osmolarity not close to the blood? Uh, probably read it, but I don't remember. Care to explain? I don't. I I was just asking you because they didn't teach us like the why for this part in pharmacy. They just taught us like, hey, this is when to use this. So. Cool, this sounds like another topic for another video. <laughs> like it. It's more of a nursing type topic, because, like... <laughs> yeah, um, that, that was that was 20, 2019 for me. Yeah, so, it wasn't that, that, wasn't that long. I don't, I don't really <laughs> remember this. If I was taught this, maybe I was, maybe I wasn't. Probably was. Yeah, I, I mean, I hope so, but you never know, you know? But anyways... Maybe someone in the comments knows. Just comment below if you know the why behind some of these answers. Because pharmacy school, they don't teach you the why. I'm going to answer this two years from now, and it's going to be 2023. We're going to finally know the answer, but then we would have made a video about this. So. <laughs> exactly. So next up is common books for uh, IV medications. Uh, the one book is called Trissles. This is like your handbook for injectable drugs. And then King's is kind of the guide to parental admixtures as well it's pretty much the same thing but there's two different books for it and they might just ask you like what kind of book you use for inject injectable med i know rx prep asks questions like this like for both of these and you have to know what the name of the book is so it's something just a tidbit of knowledge for your exams and for your board this is where we start getting into some of the topics so drug drug incompatibilities Here's some of the topics we'll be talking about. So non-PVC containers. So if, if a drug leaches into the PVC, you want to put those drugs into a non-PVC container. So you kind of need to know both of those topics really well. Drugs that can go, only go in saline or NS or 0.9% NS, what you want to call it, normal saline. Dextrose is D5W usually in the hospital. And talk about a couple of things with Rosef and Rosef track, so a couple key things and to know with IVs. So getting into it with the uh, non-PVC containers. I'm on to butcher these names, so bear with me here. First one is uh, poly polyophylline. Next one is polypropylene and glass. So the next slide will be going over the drugs that leach into PVCs. But you need to know these container ideas, so if you want one of those drugs we'll be talking about next slide, you can remember to put it in one of these containers. So, that's just why this is important. So next slide is drugs that do leach into the PVC. An easy way to remember this is a acronym called Latin. So L is lorazepam, or Ativan. Uh, a is for aminoglycosides. T is for tacrolimus. Another T is for taxanes. Taxanes usually have the word tax in it. That's why it's called taxanes. 
I is for insulin. You guys know what insulin is. And NTG is nitroglycerin. These are all the drugs that leach into PVC. And if they leach into PVC, you need to go back to the previous slide and look at what the PVC non-PVC containers are. So that's your polyophylin, polypropylene, and your glass. So if you have one of these drugs, make sure it's not in a PVC container and make sure it's in one of those other containers. Make sense, Mitchell? I am learning. You are learning? Good, because uh, there's uh, some quiz questions at the end, so you guys better be paying attention. Oh, no. Yeah, no. Hey, quizzes. That's how you learn. <clears throat> so, saline only, or NS only, or whatever you want to call it. Normal saline. There's a couple of drugs here. It's a little bit... I made the acronym of a DSEP. It makes zero sense to anyone else, but maybe I'll help you guys. Uh, first one's ampicillin. Next one's daptomycin. Uh, the I is infliximab. The A is ampicillin solbactam or unison. So it could be a U, depending if they give you the brand or the generic. Caspofungin is a C. Erdipenem is the E. Infinitwin or dilatin is the P, so a Dacept. So let's give us again. Ampicillin, dapto, infliximab. Ampicillobactam, capsifungin, erda, and phenytoin. These are saline only, which is pretty important to know because they could literally just change the question up. Like, okay, D5W, what drugs are not compatible in this? And you have to know this list. So, but speaking of D5W or dextrose, what drugs only go on dextrose? A little bit shorter list. That's your BOA, so Bactrim, Oxaloptin. Amphotericin B and Synersid. So BOA is a lot easier to remember than the uh, normal saline list, which is a DSEP. This is just BOA, so it's only, what, four, four drugs? A lot easier to remember, but you need to know it regardless because it's kind of important. If you put these in saline, it probably won't work too good, so you need to make sure these go in only in dextrose. Got it. You guys got it. So rocephin or ceftriaxone drugs that don't really mix with it. You don't want to use rocephin or ceftriaxone with calcium containing solutions. This is cause it the solution to make precipitates. That can lead to clots and probably death in the patient. So again, ceftriaxone calcium, don't do it. Patient will probably die due to a clot, or it's gonna lead to more complications in that are necessary for the patient. Something easy to uh, Avoid, so don't do it. Another fatal mixture on the next slide is calcium and phosphate. Again, this performs precipitates in the IV line and probably will kill the patient with the precipitate. So, calcium and phosphate you avoid, and rocephin or ceftriaxone and calcium you want to avoid as well. Again, this will probably be asked on your test just because this is. A pretty much a major interaction that can kill the patient, so they're probably going to ask this in some shape or form. And so, micron filters are kind of like filters on like needles and stuff. So, a 1.2 micron filter, which is pretty small, is used for any for lipids. But usually, you would use a 0 0.22 micron filter for anything else. Again, this is just a tidbit of knowledge that they might ask you about. And you have to pay attention what they're using the filter needle for. So if they say it's lipids or fats, you make sure it's a 1.2 micron filter needle. Just like the MCAT guys, little details like that can cost you a couple points and can cost you from failing the exam. So something for you to guys to keep in mind. So 1.2 for fats or lipids, 0 0.22 for everything else pretty much. So speaking of filters, what drugs need a filter? Um, Galplat. So golimumab, amiodarone, lorazepam. So that's gal. And plat is phenytoin, lipids, infotericin B, and taxanes, but not doxotaxel. So again, that ex 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 exception, you guys need to know because they could throw that in the test. And if you don't know the exception, you might be picked as a need a filter and you get it wrong because that's a, uh, they don't, Doxotax was not needed. So going over it one last time, drugs that need filters. 
Golimumab. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Emiodarone, Lorazepam, so that's your gal. Then Plat is your Phenytoin, Redalian, Lipids, Infotericin B, and Taxanes, but not Doxetaxel. So. Going into drugs so that you don't refrigerate. A little acronym for you guys is Dear Sweet Pharmacist. Freezing makes me edgy. So Dexmeter, Persidex, Sulfotrimethrin, which is also called Bactrim. Uh, Phenytoin, furosemide, metrodiazole, which is also a uh, flagell, moxifloxacin, and noxaparin. These medications don't need refrigerated. I don't know if they'll actually ask you this one or not, because this is kind of like, okay, don't refrigerate it, but never know. Again, it could be easy points if you just know the acronym, Dear Sweet Pharmacist. Freezing makes me edgy, so dexmed, sulfotrimethrin, phenytoin, furosemide, metrodiazole, moxie, and an oxaparin. Protecting from light. So protect every necessary medication from daylight. Uh, phytonidione or vitamin K, it's also called. Epidinerol, nitroprusside, mycofungin, and doxycycline. Come on, you know the acronym Prezi, I remember. Once you see it, kind of put, put them together. So protect goes with Phytone, vitamin K, every goes with epidinerol, the nitroprusside, mycofungin, doxy. Not too hard, just something you need to keep a reps on and you'll get it. Now, color change, I'm not sure if they're actually going to ask you this or not. This was in the RX prep book. It kind of emphasizes this a good bit, so I'm not going to go too much in detail for you guys can read it. Dark and slight yellow. It turns this color, you want to avoid using these drugs, so chloroprazine or dopamine turns dark and slight low, avoid using it. Necro the carbazine, if it turns pink, don't use it. If epinephrine turns pink, then brown, don't use it. Uh, that shouldn't say morphine, or should be say morphine, that's a typo right there, but if it turns dark color, don't use it. Now if nitroprusside turns blue, if it turns from orange to brown to blue, do not use it. Nit nitroprusside actually turns into cyanide, so that's bad, obviously. So make sure if your nitroprusside turns from orange, brown to blue, you do not give it and you get rid of it. And however your institution gets rid of medications. If, it, if uh, norepinephrine turns from brown or discolored, get rid of it. Tigacycline, if it turns green or black, get rid of it as well. Don't use it. Drugs that are actually colored though, anthracycline and rifampin can turn your body fluids red. Methotrexate MVI can turn your stuff yellow. Tagacycline's yellow and orange teeth. Metoxantrones can give you a blue skin, eyes, and urine, which is kind of interesting seeing blue skin or eyes from a drug. You can see that too often. And iron can turn your urine brown. So guys, just to wrap it up, I do want to go over a couple of things real quick on the next slide. So what drugs are in saline only? I'll give you guys a couple of seconds to think about it. So saline only is your Ideasep, so this is your ampicillin, daptomycin, infliximab, ampicillin, solbactam, capsifungin, ertapenem, and phenytoin. Ideasep, yeah, acronym I made for this one. Drugs that are in dextrose only. This is your BOAS. This is Bactrim, Oxal, Amphotericin B, and Synersid. And what drugs need protected from the light? So, this is, if you remember, protect every necessary medication from daylight. Phytonidone, vitamin K, epidinerol, nitroprusside, mycofungin, and doxycycline. So guys, that's it for this video, guys. I hope you learned something new. Do you have any questions, Mitchell? I learned something new. Good. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. I, I don't have any questions, but I, I did learn something new. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, check us out next video. Peace.